Zika has probably been underdiagnosed in a lot of places because it tends to co-occur in areas where you have dengue fever, where you have other yellow fever, you have other kinds of vector-borne diseases. Zika has in common symptoms with a lot of other flaviviral diseases, but it tends to be a self-limiting disease, and so just with bed rest, you'll get better in a week or so. For a long time, it caused minor outbreaks in Africa and Southeast Asia. Um, and in sort of the mid-2000s, we started to see outbreaks in other areas outside of there. And more recently, um, last year, we started to see a major outbreak in Brazil. It never really was associated with any kind of real serious disease in people. Nobody ever died from it. It never really caused anything complicated. So to be honest, nobody really cared. We're seeing for the first time a connection with newborn microcephaly, um, where basically women that get the virus when they're pregnant have babies with small heads and there's um, brain damage and neurological symptoms that go along with that. And it is the only reason that people are, are really concerned about this outbreak right now. Brazil saw a spike in microcephaly that was coincident with the Zika outbreak. What we have is a strong correlation, but we don't actually know whether Zika is actually responsible for microcephaly or not. Zika is primarily transmitted by the bite of an infected mosquito. There is some data to say that it can be transmitted person to person, um, primarily through sex. With Zika virus, um, about 80% of the people that are infected with it never develop symptoms. But just because they're asymptomatic doesn't mean that they're not able to still transmit the virus. If you're in an area where Zika is present, the only way to avoid getting Zika is to avoid being bitten by the mosquitoes that carry it. Aedes aegypti, which is widespread in Brazil, and also Aedes albopictus, which is also relatively widespread in Brazil. From a strictly control standpoint, between now and the Olympics, Brazil is going to need to undergo a very rigorous program of vector control, insecticidal treatment, fogging, controlling larval breeding habitat uh, to control the mosquitoes. There are also some novel techniques that are being um, approached now. There's already been some releases of genetically modified mosquitoes in Brazil. These are genetically engineered to be sterile, and so it suppresses the population level of the mosquitoes. We know how to control Aedes aegypti. They've been doing that in Brazil for a long time for dengue virus. It's exactly the same thing that they have to do for Zika. They just need to make sure um, that what they're doing is very effective, organized, rigorous um, in order to do this. But it can be done. I think one of the things that this Zika outbreak has shown is how much we don't really know about the biology of the mosquitoes that are transmitting these viruses. We don't know how Zika can actually interact with the mosquito to mediate transmission. We don't know much about the major epidemiological factors that are driving this epidemic. We don't know why it's exploded in Brazil, but it hasn't done that in other places. So there are a lot of things that we really need to know and, and get boots on the ground and actually start studying these things. For good or for bad, science and policy tends to be reactive. One of the lessons I think we can take um, from the Zika virus outbreak is that the, these things are going to happen. We live in a global society, and so I think we need to be expecting these things and we need to be ready for them when they do appear.